Basically, what happened is the British Astronomical Association, of which I'm a member, put out on their website that the Campaign for the Preservation of Rural England, a bit of a mouthful, were doing this star count. Now, we've, they've done these before, and sometimes we've been involved, sometimes we haven't. Uh, so they put this on their website. I got in touch with them and said, look, we've got plenty of dark skies, 26 dark sky sites in the Isle of Man. Um, can we get involved? And they wrote back and said, almost immediately, said, yes, we'd love you to get involved. Please send your results to us and we'll make sure they're put on the map when we do the results. So I thought, wow, what a great opportunity to shout from the rooftops what marvellous dark skies we've got. Mm -hmm. and so that's basically what it's about. And the actual campaign involves doing something that was done last year for the Year of Our Island. And if anyone's still got the little booklets entitled Your Guide to Dark Skies, it's on the back page of that. But it's really, really very simple. All you've got to do is to find the stars of the constellation Orion. Mm -hmm. And then when you've found the stars of the constellation Orion, and ev well, not everybody, but most people know that when you look due south about this time of year, about 9, 10 o'clock at night, there are three stars in a line, three stars in a line sloping from upper right to lower left. Find those three stars. They're really quite unmistakable. If you follow that line down, you come to a very bright object on the horizon. That's the star Sirius, brightest star in the sky. So you know you're in the right part of the sky. So go back to my three stars. Look above the three. There are two bright stars. One upper left has a distinctively reddish orangey tinge to it. And one not quite alongside, slightly down a little bit. Those are the two top stars. Then go down exactly underneath the three stars and there are two bright stars again. The one on the lower right is very bright. That's the star Rigel in the constellation of Orion. And then along to the other one, which is bottom left. So draw in your mind's eye a sort of square around these and that's the part of the sky we're looking at. That's where what we want you to do with the naked eye is count how many stars you can see. Now, straight away, I can tell you there's three. The three stars in his belt are in that square. You don't count the corner stars, but what you basically do is count all the stars you can see with the naked eye within that rough square. And then you send them off to the cpre.org.uk. That's the email address. Uh, I'm sure that will be available online and all sorts of places. Uh, if you go on to just CPRE, Campaign for the Preservation of Rural England. And I know we're not in England. I don't want anyone to think we are, but we have had... Uh, approval. In, indeed, they'd be delighted to accept our results. And despite it being quite a lovely event to be a part of and promote how lovely the Alamance skies are, there's more of a uh, well, there's a more there's more of a purpose behind it in terms of light pollution. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. It's trying to show just how bad or how good the skies are in certain parts of it. I mean, the very name of the organisation, Campaign for the Preservation of Rural England, they're looking at preserving the, those aspects of rural life that are, are so special to us all. And we've got a lot of it on the Isle of Man. We've got beautiful countryside, beautiful scenery, marine scenery, and, of course, the skies, which I'm always talking about. So it's a great opportunity to show that. It's a great opportunity for us to sh shout from the rooftops just how good we are. Just a word of warning to people, though. When you do this exercise, um, the dates to do it are between the 2nd of February and the 23rd of February. So it's a two-week period. But the best time to do it is from this Saturday, the 2nd, through to the following Sunday, the 9th. That's because there's no moon around. The moon is gone. The biggest source of light pollution after the sun, which is obviously very bright, is the moon. And when we have the moon in the sky, you can't see as much of the darkness and the, the fainter stars. But what I need people to do is to remember, don't just go outside, look for Orion and say, oh, there it is. Yeah, there's three stars there. Bang, that's done. Mm -hmm. You need to give yourself at least 10 minutes to get your eyes attuned to the dark. You'll be amazed at the difference. Find yourself a dark location, shield it away from as many lights as possible. No one near street lights. Don't put any house lights on when you're in the back garden, for instance. Get your eyes attuned to the dark and then see what you can see. I did this last night. It was a clear last night and I did it last night and I was walking home and I could see the three stars of Orion's belt very, very easily. By the time I got home and I was used to looking at that area and there weren't too many lights around, I was up to about seven or eight without trying properly. So and this there is are between least, 10 and 9 sorry? and 10 at night, is it? Uh, about, prime no, time. this was about 10 o'clock actually last night. And so obviously that wasn't within the time lag. But please stick to the rules if you can. We don't want people to invent stars they can't see. There are at least well, at least half a dozen you'll see very, very easily, but can you see more? The, the, the answer is tens and twenties is what you should be able to see. But obviously, if everyone sends in similar answers from the Isle of Man, but obviously they'll know it was a clear night in the Isle of Man and we're doing it properly. But if someone says they saw 70 and someone else says they saw 10, then obviously it's not true. So 
Be truthful with it, but at the same time, give yourself a chance to do it and uh, let's put the island on the map. In terms of light pollution, how are we in comparison to places in England? Fantastic. We are really, really good. If you look at photographs of the Irish Sea from space, and we've got this classic photograph that Nicole Stott took and others have taken consequently, yes, there are lights around Douglas. And if you look at the Isle of Man from space at night time, we can see the lights of Ramsey, Douglas, Peel, Port Aaron, and everywhere else. But we haven't got this insidious dark glow, this light orangey glow that some of the older type streetlights put across. We don't have the glow on the horizon um, that people have got in cities across. Yes, if you look at the if you go to the Sound, for instance, and look south of the Isle of Man or towards the the west, you'll see that the lights of Dublin. You can see quite clearly this orange glow of the lights of Dublin way down on the horizon. But of course, that's a good 30, 40 miles away at least. So we don't have that problem. I'll be absolutely honest with you. The reason our skies are so good is because we're on an island. And when we look out to sea, there are no lights invading your uh, your view. So that's why we've got such great skies. And because we don't have too much light away from the towns and um, villages, um, that's why our skies are so good. And can you give us a little insight on the effects, the lasting effects of light pollution? How long have you got? I mean, obviously, as an astronomer, we want the skies to be dark. There's a lovely expression in one of the campaigns that the um, Campaign for Dark Skies do with the BAA, and that is, to our children, the stars. People children and everybody are not seeing the stars as they used to be but it isn't just astronomers bird life um trees are budding earlier in places where there's lots of life uh, lots of lights the trees are budding earlier and as a consequence this is upsetting the rhythm of animals and insects who are literally born to to, to, to take the pollen or to live to prey on the insects that are taking the pollen all this sort of stuff it's causing a problem for turtles i know we don't have any turtles in the isle of man but the lights of the cities are distracting the baby turtles when they come out of their eggs and go down to the sea where they're looking for the shimmer of the sea they're seeing the lights of the towns and the villages light it also causes as i said how long have you got it causes health problems and there's a famous story about in new york and it's a great to commemorate uh, well not great but it, it's a tribute to the people that died in the in the Twin Towers disaster, they put a huge beam, a huge spotlight up um, on the footprint of where the Twin Towers were. Mm -hmm. They found that birds were getting caught in this beam of light and couldn't escape it. They couldn't fly out of the beam of light. They were so distracted mm -hmm. and they were falling down dead on the ground. Mm -hmm. They realised this and now every September when they do this commemoration, um, they turn the lights off for a minute each hour in the hours of darkness and the birds can fly away. Mm -hmm. We don't realise just how bad light is. We're so obsessed with light. I am not, as an astronomer, against appropriate, adequate lighting. But don't overdo it. Don't have lights pointing up at the sky. It's a waste of energy. It's carbon footprint, global warming, all those things rolled into one. We don't need to do it. Let's put the sky back as it should be. Let people enjoy it and let it help the nature and the wildlife and everything else. What? everyday things can people do to make sure they reduce their own carbon footprint? Basically, if you have got outside lighting, make sure they're fully shielded and they point downwards. They're illuminating the place you want them to be illuminated. If you've got lights that are tripped by um, sensors, uh, make sure they're turned off from about whatever time you, you're in. If you're a person who's in at 11 o'clock at night every night of the week, then don't have them coming on because an animal, a, a rabbit, a, a cat, a dog will set them off. Uh, you don't need to have lights coming on at that time of night. Um, and just basically, just think twice before you put a light on on an outside building. At the moment, there is no planning requirement to stop you putting any light you want on the outside of your property. And the trouble is, if they're what I would call bulkhead lights that shine in every direction, then they're lighting up the sky. And that's what we... Just go online and look for the Europe from in the dark. I mean, some film companies now are actually showing pictures of the Earth at night and they're saying it's a beautiful scene. It's not. It's abhorrent. It's terrible because it's, it's wasting energy. Huge amount of energy is being used to generate this electricity. If we had more shielding on them and things like that, you wouldn't need as much. We wouldn't burn as much coal or oil or nuclear or whatever we generate our electricity by. So we're saving the planet at the same time, giving people back the stars. And just going back to the event that's coming up very soon, do you have any personal favourite spots on the island for stargazing? I do. And one of my favourite spots, I'll be honest, is one of our 26 dark sky sites, that the new reservoir car park at Solby. That is one of the best spots on the island of Man for stargazing. It's a wonderful spot and it's reasonably sheltered. You're away from the coastline. But to be honest, 
anywhere where you've got no lights is very good. My back garden is obviously one of my favourites. I'm very fortunate. I have got a street light, um, not quite in front of my house, but to the side of our house. If I get in the shadow of that in my back garden, it's pitch black and I look due south. I'm on and head looking due south. Fantastic skies. Yes, I get a bit of a glow from Douglas, but nothing like as bad as other places. Mm -hmm. Other places I can recommend are places like Axon Fell is a great car park, Conrenny, Port Sodrick. Onkin Park is a dark sky site. Yes, the lights of Douglas are a problem. Not a problem, but they are, they, are, they are present. But looking out to sea, it's great. Anywhere with a horizon view is where you need to be. And then um, good luck. And do let us know how you get on. But please send your results to the Star Count 2019 at cpre at org.uk.